start to talk a little bit about how to do some of the basic transformations of a sine function. So I have the function y equals sine x. And there's a couple things we need to know about the sine function. First of all, the, 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 the parent function, the sine function, has an amplitude of 1. That means that the maximum value it's going to get to is 1, and the minimum value it's going to get to is negative 1. If you think about it on a unit circle, I'll, I'll try drawing a unit circle over here. Well, we can draw a unit circle right here. The value of sine at 0 right here is, um, is 0. And as we go up here to pi over 2, my sign gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it hits 1. And then as, as it goes from pi over 2 to pi, it gets smaller, and it gets back down to 0. When I go from pi, 3 pi over 2, it becomes negative 1. And as I go back up to 0 here, sine goes back to 0. So my amplitude, the highest and lowest that it's going to get when I put it in graph form, is going to be 1. The second thing I want to know about my sine function is that the period of my sine function is 2 pi. And that means that the values of sine are going to repeat every 2 pi distance of angle. So again, if I was just to kind of draw in another unit circle here, sine is going from 0 to 1, back down to 0 to negative 1. 0, 1, 0, negative 1. 0, 1, 0, negative 1. On and on and on, every time that I go around that unit circle, every 2 pi, it's going to repeat the exact same pattern. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to identify five key points. And this is a method of graphing that you're going to be able to do, even with your transformations. You want to identify five key points in the, in the function. This applies to the sine function and the tangent function. It also applies, well, the sine function and the cosine function. Let's, let's focus on those right now. So one key point is 0. And the other key point is the end of the period, which is 2 pi. So that's two key points. Right in the middle there is pi. Right here is 3 pi over 2. And right here is pi over 2. So if I have this function, and I'm going to set um, this right here equal to 1, and I'm going to set this right here equal to negative 1. I know at 0, sine is going to be 0. And I know that at pi over 2, sine is going to be 1. I know that at pi, it's going to be back to 0. I know that at 3 pi over 2, it's going to be negative 1. And I know that at 2 pi, it's going to be back to 0. So my cycle is going to look like this. This is going to be the graph of the sine function. All I need is those five key points and the amplitude. So the period and the amplitude divide the period up into five key points, know the amplitude, and I can graph the sine function. I'm going to do that uh, one more time here. 0, 2 pi, right in the middle is pi, right in the middle of that is pi over 2, and right in the middle of these is 3 pi over 2. I'm going to make my amplitude right here, just so you can see this a little better. This is 1 minus 1, so pi, I start at 0, 1, back to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0. So again, my graph is going to kind of look like this. 
And I thought it'd be fun to see whether or not it matches up with this. And it didn't work. And let's try one more time. Sure enough, you can see that the graph, and, and it continued on going negative this way right here. The sign is just going to repeat itself over and over and over again. Now, I want to be able to do some of these basic transformations. And right now, they're going to take the form of y equals a sine omega x. The a is going to determine my amplitude, and the omega, which is sometimes called b, is going to determine the period. So let's talk about the A, the amplitude, first. The body of the sine function is right here. I have an input value, x. I apply the sine function to it, and I get a y. But before I get my final y, I have to multiply whatever this value is by A. So in this sense, I like to think of this A as being outside of the sine function. In other words, a function machine is going to do everything that it needs to do right inside here. And then, after that's done, I'm going to multiply it by A. So the only thing that's going to change here are my A values. So here's an example. I have Y equals 3 sine X. Well, this is my graph right here of sine X. And what I'm saying with this 3 sine x is that after I get my sine value, I have to multiply every value by 3. Well, that shouldn't be too hard to do. I can go at 0, it's still going to be 0. So all of these zeros are going to be zeros. They're not going to change. And at 1, which I know is at pi over 2, that is now going to be 3. And at 3 pi over 2, where it was negative 1, is now going to be negative 3. So my amplitude, determined by this fact, this number right there, is going to stretch my graph vertically by a factor of 3. So if I'm going to graph it in, I'm not that good at this, but I'm going to try graphing it. It's going to look like this. And then it's going to come down, and then it's going to go up, and then it's going to come down, and it's going to go back up. So it should look something like that. Let's try it and find out. It's funny. It always seems to take me twice to do this. I don't have any idea why. There we go. Sure enough, there it is. You can see how, how it graphed it. So all that A does is it does a vertical stretch, or if the A was less than 1, it would do a vertical compression. So redrawing the graph like that is one way to handle it. I'm going to show you a little bit easier way to handle it. I'm going to clear my ink off the page there, and I'm going to um, make that one go away. And we know right now that this is the basic sine function. This is um, our function y is equal to sine x. So I know that my amplitude right here is 1, so that's a negative 1. And I know that these values are pi and 2 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. This value right here is pi. This value right here is 2 pi. And what I'm going to do is, since all I have in this revised function here is a changed amplitude. All I have is the A. Let's write that up here. A sine omega x. All I have is a changed A. An easy way to do this, instead of actually stretching the graph, is just to go like this. I'm going to make my amplitude 3 and negative 3. So instead of having to redraw the graph, really all I've done is I've changed the axes. This is allowable. 
I'm going to go back to my graph of um, just plain old sine x. <coughs> just plain old sine x. And I'm going to make my, do my, make my best effort here to explain the impact of omega. I know that on my graph of sine x, I go from 0 to 2 pi to make a complete cycle. That is a graph of sine x. Well, when I have an omega, what value do I have to have for x to make the argument of my sine function equal to, for example, sine 2 pi. So I want to know what value of x I need to get the same value of sine as I have for sine x being sine 2 pi. Well, that's not too tough to figure out, because if I want sine 2x to be equal to the same as sine 2 pi, then clearly x is equal to pi. So in this transformed function, whenever x is equal to pi, I have the same value for sine as I had in my parent function here of sine 2 pi. What if in my new transformed function here, I wanted to have the same value as sine pi over 2? So sine pi over 2 in the regular sine function is right here, and we know that that is equal to 1. Well, if I want, if I want my new transformed function here to be the same as sine pi over 2, then my x has to equal pi over 4. So y equals sine 2 times pi over 4, that's the same y value as y is equal to sine pi over 2. Well, I know that sine pi over 2 is equal to 1. My x value now is pi over 4. So at pi over 4, be right here, my sine value is going to be equal to 1. My sine 2x value is going to be equal to 1. And like I did before, I'm going to get back to 0 over here at pi. Essentially, what's happened is I'm getting to these values on for my, for my parent function. I'm getting to them twice as fast. I am compressing the period of my sine function. Let's see if we can make this graph show uh, what it's going to look like. I think it might be kind of difficult to do here because of all these scratches that I put in here. Let me erase a little bit of this here. Let me highlight that. And let's see if we can't make that show up. There we go. So you can see in the new graph that I get to 1 right here to pi over 4. And I'm back to 0 here. Instead of at pi, it's at pi over 2. And I'm down here at negative 1 at 3 pi over 4. And I'm back to 0 at pi. And then I do a whole other complete cycle here before I get back to 2 pi. In other words, I've completed two cycles with sine 2x as opposed to one cycle with sine x. Let's erase the ink here. Clean it up a little bit. 
and I'll show you mechanically how we do this. The period, let's see different colors, the period of sine x is 2 pi. The period of a sine function where I have an omega, write it again, a sine omega x is the period of the parent function divided by omega. So in this case, it's the period of the parent function, 2 pi, divided by 2. My period is pi. I complete a complete cycle in pi distance as opposed to 2 pi distance. So one way to do that is to start with my parent function. I'm going to resketch it here. I think you can see my, my blue kind of following the trace here. And then double the amount of cycles I do in that same period. Instead of one cycle, I have, there's one, and now I have two complete cycles. That's one way to do it, and that's totally acceptable, and you should definitely know how to look at it that way so you can see the actual horizontal compression when I have an omega that is greater than one. But another way to do it is this. showing it to me. There we go. Oh, sine 2x. There we go. Okay. This is my sine function. And I know my basic sine function has 0, 2 pi, pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Well, I can just take my basic sine function and I'm going to change the x-axis. Because I know that my period now goes from 0 to pi. It doesn't go to 2 pi. And half the distance between 0 and pi, right there, is pi over 2. And half the distance from 0 to pi over 2 is pi over 4. And half the distance from pi to pi is 3 pi over 4. So if I simply relabel my axis, Similar to what I did with amplitude, I have done the same kind of compression on my graph um, with, with, the, with this new omega. So, so remember, the mechanical formula for doing this is I take the period of my parent function, the period of sine and of cosine is 2 pi. I take my period and I divide it by my omega, which in this case is 2, that gave me a period of pi. But what if my omega is less, less than 1? I'm going to make that change right here. I'm going to change my omega. I'm going to try to change my omega. I'm going to change it to 1 half. Let's, um, we're going to erase my markings here. I know this is my sine function. This is 0. This is 2 pi. And now I have a new omega here. Well, look, it completes a full cycle. But it is taking all the way here from negative 2 pi, going down to 1, and back up, and then back down. It takes a distance of 4 pi to complete a cycle. Well, what do you know? The period of sine x is 2 pi. 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is my omega. Multiply by 2 over 1, 2 over 1, that goes away. This is equal to 4 pi. Now my whole period is 4 pi. And I'll, I'll make it look a little bit better here. Um, let's, uh, 
let's kind of clear this ink off. And I'm going to change uh, just the way this graph looks just a little bit here. So you can see the cycles maybe a little bit more clearly. Um, I'm going to start my x-axis at 0. And I'm going to go all the way, say, to uh, 13. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So you can see it a little bit more, more clearly. My sine x is cycling twice. So this right here would be 2 pi. And that's going to go cycle again. Another, that's 4 pi. And my transformed function right there with the omega of 1 half does the cycle. One cycle takes all the way to do 4 pi. And I could do the same thing with this one. Instead of drawing the new graph, I could just change my periods. So um, let's get that one off. This is my basic sine function. Um, I have 0. I have 2 pi. I have 4 pi. But now I know that a full period with my transform function is 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is equal to 4 pi. So I come here and I change my 2 pi to 4 pi. Halfway in the middle is 2 pi. Halfway between those two is 3 pi. Halfway between those two is just pi. So um, erase that, erase that. This is now the graph of sine 1 half x. By changing the axes, instead of by changing, instead of by re redrawing the graph.